In the Formula One test I did, I think it was over six Gs in, in Silverstone. So yeah, that was a lot. But I did train a lot as well, especially my neck. Uh, you know, the neck. I think even Lewis Hamilton said when he did his first test in a Formula One car after half a day, yeah, he couldn't hold his neck up. You know, it was falling off onto the headrest. What are you saying? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing like fresh Muna Ghosh, man. So you were saying, uh, best part about cafe is next to home. Yeah, but I, I can put it on mom's tab. <laughs> Jan, welcome to the Bombay journey. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Same here, man. The only other person we've picked up from the other, na, is yeah. Baman Bhai. Because uh, Parsi represents. He lives <laughs> just down the road. Ha, na, yeah. to. What has been your journey like? So, you were born and brought up here, is what you said. Then go on. So, I spent most of my childhood here in Bombay. Okay. Until I was uh, 13 years old. So, uh -huh. I, I went to school in, in Bombay Scottish. So, yes. I was Scottish right? And uh, till I was 13, I spent yeah, my whole, whole life in Bombay. And after that, I moved to the UK by myself. Oh yeah? Yeah, to pursue my racing career just because India was limited. Correct. And I was also doing a lot of racing in, in England and in Europe at that time. Ah. So, uh, it was a, a tough choice because I was a very much of a homeboy. Really? Yeah, a lot. I miss my family a lot but oh, uh, shit. I had to go and I was in boarding school there. Oh wow. So, uh, yeah, but I was really serious about racing from a young age. So, that's when I decided like, yeah, this is the time, yeah, the right time to go and yeah, it was a tough choice, but uh, I glad, I'm glad I went. Good man, good stuff and you're doing so well. I mean, jin logon ko pata nahi hai, un logon ko bata dete hain. Dekhiye, ye hai ek F2 driver Jehan Daru wala. Agar aap log content dekhte hain, which has become very popular and how sab logon ko pata chala hai ki bhai racing ki duniya ko expand ho gaya suddenly because of the web series that has come out. So, uh, does that change life and how you were perceived in in the public eye? I mean, uh, to be honest, not a lot. Really? Yeah, a lot of people do follow me now. I think now that I've come to Formula 2, ha. especially it's grown in the last year. You know, yeah. it's uh, my races, my qualifying are getting uh, aired on Star Sports. Correct. So, a lot more fan following, uh, you know, is coming now. Yeah. But uh, the best part about me being at home is my family and friends treat me the same way which ah. I love you know it doesn't matter when I come home I'm home and you know I can switch on and off from yeah. racing and it's like I've never left even after six months you know uh, sometimes I don't even speak to my friends for three four months my best friends but when I come home it's like I didn't left I didn't leave yeah the, you know superb yeah so so Parsi Colony does give you a lot in life like the way you are and the way of being is it yeah definitely uh, of course, I'm Parsi and living in the other Parsi colony. <laughs> if anyone asks me my favorite place to live, huh. it's the Parsi colony. Really? The other, yeah. Just, uh, you know, like I said, I had uh, like a gymkhana behind Correct. me growing up. So every evening, uh, I used to go there. We play, you know, all sorts of sports, cricket, table tennis, football. Huh. Huh. And we, I socialize with, with my friends all the time. And after we grew older, when my friends were in college and I was on holiday, like we would chill at like five gardens and the railing till like you know one to a.m. Just uh, you know chat, catch up, and yeah. then you know go home. So yeah, abroad obviously I have good friends, but it's Correct. nothing. Uh, nothing else. Like uh, Bombay, home. home is home. Yeah. You were doing go karting here in India as well. Yeah. So, पहले मैं इंडिया में शुरू किया. कहाँ Cook. Bombay mein bahut tracks nahi tha. Haan, Pawai had one. Haan, Pawai mein tha. Main udar pehla shuru kiya. Hmm. Uh, that's where I first got scouted by Rayaman Banerjee. Yeah? Yeah, I actually was not interested. I was interested in racing, but uh, we used to talk about it at home and you know my family was like, there's not much of racing in India. So yeah, it's like a dream, a long lost dream. Correct. And then one day my dad was just traveling for work. And while flying in a newspaper, he saw an advertisement that Rayaman was holding a camp in Pawai for young carters. Oh wow. So, I had an English exam on Monday. This was a weekend, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday. So, I told my mom, like, I convinced my mom, like, let me go and at least try out. Yeah. And I was really young at that time, maybe uh, eight and a half, nine years old. Huh. And I went for the tryouts and he said I did really well, considering my experience was, was very minimal. And uh, actually, just few months after that, I started racing for his national team in oh, India. Wow. And uh, yeah, I did a 
So I followed like this two year progression path where I did the first year I was learning in India, the second year I was fighting for the championships and then I went to Asia, the level uh. was even higher there. The first year I was learning and then I won the Asian championships oh, wow. and then I've slowly progressed uh, and that's when I, uh, you know, finished in the top three in a one in a billion hunt in India. Correct, that was the first one. By Force India. Yeah. yeah. So there was like, uh, that was actually interesting because the age limit was 14 to 18 at that time and I was only 13 so I was not even eligible to enter the competition but they had a wildcard entry for one person in the whole country below 14 and one above 18 Oh wow So I qualified from that by just one hundredth of a second It's a, it's a story very close to what Max's is because uh, wo young hota tha and after that uh, the folks changed the rules itself right? Yeah Fuck man that's superb yeah Thank you. Uh, have you gone comparing yourself to Max sometime in life? Like yeah, I mean, obviously, I uh, my goal is to go to Formula One. I'm also with Red Bull, so yeah. uh, you know, uh, only one step away now. Correct. Uh, but you know, hopefully, <laughs> if the rest of the season goes well, then I could join him in Formula One. But yeah, Max is obviously a phenomenal talent. You know, once in a lifetime talent. I think he proved it by going to Formula One at just Absolutely. 17 to 18 years old, and uh, he's already world champion now and already fighting for another one. So yeah, dude. So. Abhi na, agle paan des minute hum sirf Formula One pe trip karne wale hain, just racing pe trip karne wale hain. To ab log hamare saath rahiye ga, theek hai? So, hum gaadiyan jo chalate hain India mein, or when you're on the road, there is lane driving. But what people don't know is driving lines. And driving lines are where the car is supposed to be or is the best when you're driving. So when you follow those driving lines, how difficult is it to follow those driving lines? So yeah, uh, you know. You learn the basics of driving lines in go-karting. Ah. That's where we spend like five or six years in, in go-karting. Uh, every track has a a perfect line. Okay. Where in the radius of the corner, you, you come to an apex, you go wide, you use the perfect radius. So that radius which makes you go around at the perfect speed at the per- and the fastest way is the yeah. perfect driving line. Uh, in a race car, you know, we don't have a lot of laps. So we learn the perfect line normally uh, on a simulator. Oh yeah. So uh, you know, before race weekend, we spend two or three days on a simulator, just perfecting the driving line, the gears we need to use in corners. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that takes time. But yeah. uh, you know, now I'm uh, been driving over a decade since I was Correct. ten years old. So uh, those things do come naturally to us. But yeah, they're definitely not easy. Because every time there is a new track that's opened up, and you're you're kind of going to like say uh, Abu Dhabi or one of these new ones, you know, yeah. uh, then then shit hits like the real. Self, I mean, really yeah, it's definitely difficult. Uh, yeah, Abu Dhabi is one, but especially when you go to new tracks which are like street circuits, yeah, uh, like Monaco, if you've never been before, correct. Yeah, those tracks are, are really difficult. Yeah, the driving line is basically driving as close to the walls as you can, <laughs> so uh, you know, it's more uh, fear and yeah, uh, dude. It is for reward in those kind of circuits. That's true. I mean, since you speak of Monaco, Monaco is one of my favorite tracks, right? You know, and uh, I have goosebumps, dude. Like uh, that track doesn't have a straight at all. Like you don't have the tunnel is probably where you're going full. Is that DRS on this one? I don't know, I'm not. Yeah, sure. they have DRS on the main street, but Correct. it's the it's the only track we barely even go to six gear because the streets are not uh, yeah. long enough. So uh, yeah, it's. It's tight, but when you drive it, it's a lot tighter than you think. Like at the speeds we we drive and go through corners, it uh, literally feels like you're driving on a railway track. You know, there's not <laughs> enough space for uh, even two cars to go through some corners. True, dude. I mean, my uh, background is that because it's important that these guys know what I'm talking about. So, if you Monaco Grand Prix, you will understand that it's crazy because it's also very glamorous. Like it's, uh, it's, it's it's a different world. Or there's yachts, there's hot women, there's all kinds of stuff happening. So what is going on in your head in, in Monaco? Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of glamour. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, as the drivers, we don't get to see all that glamour. Maybe on a Sunday night, but, you know, <laughs> apart from that, yeah, we are fully locked and focused in, you know, it's one of the tracks where you require 100% focus at, at all times. You know, you, you can't look at the side, uh, you know, nothing. So yeah, there's obviously a lot of lot of glamour, but yeah, the drivers are locked in and zoned in, and yeah. they kind of uh, you know it's just another track, and we are driving it as fast as we can. So what is your pre-race ritual? Like you have all of that in the backing. Wo ho raha hai sab kuch distractions hain dunya bhar ki. But yeah. like, what do you do right before? Like, and where do you get the energy from? 
So I'm generally quite a, like calm and relaxed person. Okay. And uh, when I am calm and relaxed is when I uh, do have the, my best results. And uh, so I I try to put myself in the mindset to go out and have fun. But okay. also the fun has to be like uh, serious. Yeah. yeah. I can be honest. Like when I'm not doing well, or it's not like I'm driving a race car and thinking, oh, I'm having so much fun. When when the results are not there, it is less fun. True. True. But uh, I normally. You know, there's so much noise in the paddock with uh, a lot of people around, a lot of fans, yeah, yeah. Uh, family, a uh, lot of people. You know, cars, engines firing teams. up, teams, a lot of people. So, you know, the best thing for me is to just put some headphones in, and I like to uh, just put noise cancelling headphones and listen to not specific music, but just to block out all the noise for like uh, you know 20, 30 minutes before I'm getting into the car. Interesting. And. Uh, I can still uh, chat here and there a bit, but yeah. Once I once I put my helmet on, I don't like getting spoken to at all. Apart from my race engineer, yeah. You know, it's just uh, me zoning in, not thinking about anything else apart from those you know five lights going off and getting Correct. ready for my race. What is it like? Because हमने तो Ford versus Ferrari देखी हुई है. उसमें तो बोलते हैं भाई you you like it's like when you're at seven thousand RPM you're with wind. So that's that's how we know it because dramatized. But What is it like to be at 335 kilometers per hour? I mean, it does feel uh, fast. Uh, also, I was also driven a Formula One car with yeah. McLaren. You know, I tested. Uh, I did four days of testing already this year. It feels fast. You get used to, or I, as drivers, we get used to the speed on the on the streets really quickly. Power, mm-hmm. but just the the downforce of these cars are just you know unreal. The amount of speed you can go through corners is the real. Uh, The thing, yeah. Okay, going at 335 is fun, but it's not the impressive thing about these cars. It's okay. the speed you can, you know, go around corners. You can do corners at over 280 kilometers an hour in cars like these. So that's the most impressive thing about uh, oh, Formula wow. One cars. So they're really holding their ground, and like. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's so much downforce in a Formula One car that you don't even. Even if you come off the throttle, you lose a lot of speed without braking. Yeah. You know, that's how much the the package and the aerodynamics slow you down. Fuck. How many G's? So basically, gravitational force. Ki बात कर रहा हूं देखो भाई लोग हाउ मेनी जीज आर यू पंपिंग इन और आउट लाइक हाउ क्रेजी डज इट गेट uh in the formula 1 test i did i think it was over 6 g's in Whoa. in silverstone so yeah that was a lot but i did train a lot as well especially my neck uh you know the neck I think even Lewis Hamilton said when he did his first test in a Formula One car after half a day, yeah, he couldn't hold his neck up. You know, it was falling off onto the headrest. What are you saying? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I have obviously a very good uh, people and trainer around me, so I worked really, really hard to make sure my neck was ready for Silverstone. And still, yeah, at the end of the second day, I could uh, really feel the jeez. Yeah, dude, fuck my life. So how how is it to have like a Red Bull backing you? Yeah, it's been great. You know, uh, end of 2019, actually, I was fighting for the Formula Three championship, uh, also with the current team I'm with, with Prema, and uh, that's when I had my first chat with Red Bull with uh, Dr. Marco at that time, and uh, he, you know, we had chats and we agreed that you know it would be great for me to be part of the Red Bull uh, junior team. So, 2020 is where my journey began with with Red Bull, and uh, yeah, I've had three strong years. Obviously, this this third year has been the strongest year. I've Correct. Had already six podiums, uh, you know, fighting for a lot of race wins. So yeah, it's it's been great. Hopefully, the journey is yeah. not over and it continues for the next few years. Was 2020 your first podium? Was it? Yeah, 2020 was my first podium and also my first win in Formula Two. Oh, yeah. super stuff, man! Congratulations. I mean, so ये देखो कई सारे मैं लड़के लड़कियाँ ये देखते हैं शो और इन इंडिया यू हैव दिस थिंग राइट कि इसने कैसे किया तो मैं भी कर सकता हूँ ये सो हाउ डू यू गो अबाउट इट सो यू इफ योर ले मैन इज स्टार्टिंग आउट वो डू दे डू टू गेट वे यू गॉट यू नो इट्स a very very like long journey it it's it's step by step so you can't really think about 4 5 6 years down the line you really have to start off uh, from scratch mm-hmm. you know like in bombay for example like indi karting and rodala yeah it's as really as simple as going there because my coach at that time rajivan banerjee he still he runs the track at indi karting and he oh, yeah? has a yeah and he has a very good eye of uh, like looking at people who are talented and you know if he has a potential future so and <laughs> Uh, he still advises me even now and you know he knows the the route and the steps to be taken you know normally i would uh, 
the best racing is is in Europe, but it's it's practically impossible to uh, when you just start go karting to jump straight to Europe. So mm-hmm. the logical steps to do what like what I did was you know to st- uh, start racing in India. Once yeah. you start winning in India, to move on to Asia. When you go to Asia, the level the level is higher up, so it's not easy to win. When you start winning in Asia, then you go to Europe. You know, mm-hmm. in India you're competing with 15 people. Let's say uh, when I went to abroad for the first time, there were 120 participants in oh, one wow. go kart race. Just to make it to the final 30 itself was very difficult at that time when I first went. So yeah, and then from you know go karting when you're good, you naturally progress into cars. Uh, now. Okay. When I started, it was Formula Renault, and then I went into Formula Three, Formula Two. But nowadays, it's similar to like MotoGP. They've uh, Formula One have designed the the junior single seaters as Formula Four, Formula Three, Formula Two, and Formula One just okay. to make it like a natural, easy progression. Ah, so it is it is a tough process. It's not like a cakewalk. Yeah, it it, it is definitely difficult. Uh, also, you need uh, backing and sponsorship. You know, it's not not at all easy. I think everyone knows racing is an expensive spot mm. so yeah it's uh, you definitely need uh, that sponsorship and it's also not easy to get unless you're you know good. performing really yeah, well yeah. and good and to be good and to show you know you need to start off somewhere true true so <clears throat> tell me this um, there's 138 140 crore of us Indians pressure yeah I guess there is uh, quite a bit of pressure uh, for me to go to Formula One, uh, there's obviously been Narin Karthik and Karun yeah. Chandok have been two Indians in Formula One. Correct. But uh, you know, nowadays compared to 10, 12 years ago, it was a lot. It's a lot harder to go into Formula One. There are ba- barely any seats opening up. Uh, you know, in terms of my results in junior single seaters, I I have been the most successful. Uh, you know, Indian, and I am. I do have this 40 super license points. So yeah. the way the the super license points are, that uh, the results you score in junior single seaters is uh, determines whether you're eligible to drive in Formula One, Correct. which is 40 points. And uh, just last year, after my Formula Two season, I became eligible uh, to to hold a super license, which is uh, you know good enough to go to Formula One. But it's all about being there, the right place, the right time. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm having a strong season right now in Formula Two. I'm the lead Red Bull junior Correct. as well. So you know, hopefully, if do if seats to open up, I I do have a good a good chance to go there. Superb stuff, man. All the best. Thank you. Let's talk about Mumbai a little. How yeah. much of this city lends to who you are? Uh, I think a lot. If yeah, I think I've traveled around the world like since I was ten years old. I've been to uh, every city you could possibly think of. And if someone asks me my favorite city, it's Bombay. Yeah, Mumbai. yeah. Uh, I just feel you know right at home. Uh, you know when I come here and. Yeah, it's definitely uh, shaped me. Even my friends and family, you know, they always, uh, you know, joke around with me. Like when I come, I have to obviously control my diet. But, uh, when I do come home, like the first two days, the first thing I do is like I eat a light lunch because I at four o'clock I want to go to my local vada pav wala and eat <laughs> eat my you know vada pav with crispy vada pav with lays and Correct. wafer and stuff. So that's perfect. Yeah, dude. I, I haven't forgotten my roots at all. Uh, yeah. I also love going back to Bombay Scottish, my school. Yeah. Because the the Frankie guy outside my school, he oh, has man. three Frankies. One Frankie. of the best. Yeah. Uh, amazing. But uh, my favorite food is homemade Parsi food. Really? Yeah. Like what all? Like berry pulao and stuff? Oh uh, yeah. Palau dal, dhansak. Ah. At my house, he, he makes like a dhansak dal, which is khatti, mitti. Ah. That is my favorite, uh, like ever. And uh, yeah, then sauce ni machi, so all like Parsi kind nice, of Nice, nice. Yeah. It's interesting dude, like uh, Mumbai has such a melting pot of cultures, right? So when you go abroad, are people talking to you a lot about India also and understanding stuff from you? Yeah, I mean, now I've been working with the same coach and trainer for the last four or five years, but I still have people who come to me like, do elephants walk on the streets? <laughs> like, really? Oh, how do you speak English? I'm wow! Like, yeah. <laughs> How do you speak English so well? Like you're from India. My man's driving yeah. an F2 car, you guys. <laughs> so yeah, they they don't have no idea how like uh, developing a country India yeah. really is and how you know Bombay has developed so much. So good stuff, man. I mean, representation is very important. And then what you're doing for us at a national level, international level is superb. Yeah. I think a lot of kids watching this should look at it. Although it's a very dangerous sport, right? So like our parents worried and shit. 
Oh, uh, I think my parents were were initially. Yeah. They still worry a bit. Uh, more just for my safety. I think my mom prays from before my race to after my race. So pretty. All much, races, yeah. Yeah, flat. Yeah, all races, all mornings. Uh, but I think the sport has moved. Uh, you know a lot in terms of safety but there's always some element of risk you know the speeds we're going at we're always driving wheel to wheel they're open wheel cars at the end of the day so uh, there's always going to be some element of risk yeah. as, as drivers we don't really uh, think about it at all uh, you know we don't find it uh, risky or dangerous but yeah uh, you know any race track you go even to a karting track the first sign you read is motorsport is dangerous you know it's at your own risk so correct no one is uh, it, it it can never be a completely safe spot yeah. uh, but you know the FI have done a great job bro. great job of making the cars as safe as they can i mean the halo is just a blessing dude like i was looking at the race which had one of these recent accidents i was so so thankful for the fact that we had a halo yeah it's definitely uh, you know when initially when it came in all the drivers were against it yeah. like yeah like oh we can't see it's right in the way and stuff yeah but now you know i don't think any driver on the grid would uh, be against having the halo correct so coming back to a little mumbai question again um any favorite places to hang out at for me it's my in the colony itself yeah you know i have so many close friends uh five guard the railing used to be one just outside my house is uh, it's not part of five garden but it's just a railing in the colony we okay. used to hang out there like every night <laughs> uh or the party gym khana is probably yeah. my favorite place to hang out especially when i was a kid i used to go there you know every day the time to come home was when my mom would shout from the balcony like you yeah know, you have to do your homework or you have to come to eat dinner it was when i was in school at like 8 o'clock my time was up yeah to play so yeah that was definitely my favorite place to to relax so i i think you were in scottish after dr dpn prasad's time so it was, no, I was not as strict or was no, i was there with during oh. his time oh, and then man, it changed you've seen the strict too. Yeah, yeah so how how difficult was it was it a strict upbringing in school like actually to be honest scottish was a blessing for me also uh, dr prasad because i was karting at that time and i was not in school a lot uh, yeah. because i had to commit a lot of days you know in, in karting the the main thing is when you pursue a career like like racing it's not like a sport like badminton or tennis mm-hmm. where you can just you know go before school train for an hour go after school train for 2 3 hours there's, there's no tracks to go to in, yeah, in bombay yeah. which are Uh, you know really so easy really, to go to exactly so i used to go to kolapur every weekend oh shit i used to drive with my grandfather we used to go like friday i used to skip school i used to go in the morning spend friday saturday sunday i used to drive back shit. from kolapur and then attend school on monday so i used to spend a lot of time outside school and uh, you know bombay scholars used to give me like you know all the support they were like as long as you're doing your homework and Like Studying. passing and doing well, <laughs> then you can have as much time off as you want. You know, at yeah. one point I was outside school for fifty percent of the time. Wow! I had less than fifty percent attendance just because I, you know, so yeah. And Good. even when I moved to UK, you know, I looked for two, three schools. They were like impossible. You can go to school with having this much time off. And finally, I found a, a really good school in called Haileybury, which I went to, and I even there I had less than fifty percent attendance. You know, through, <laughs> through the. That was interesting. So, how how is it London uh, life? Because you've lived the masala life, and then you've gone to fish and chips. Yeah. Is it like really scarring and like shit changes? I mean, when I was in school, I didn't. I was nowhere near London. I was more in like Hertfordshire, and I was in a boarding school for uh, three, four uh, years uh. at that time. I completed my GCSEs in England. That time, yeah, it was basically just race track, school, homework, playing a lot of sports in school. So it was more like fun, like that kind of a life. But nice. Not going to London, but uh, I shifted by myself to I have a house in Hammersmith now. Yeah. So I've been staying there for the last uh, four years, and yeah, it's been it's been nice. I would say, uh, you know, yeah, growing up by myself, doing my own laundry, cooking my <laughs> own food. You know, it's I can't cook. Parsi and Indian food. Yeah, dude. It's too many ingredients. It's a task. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just cooking like grilled chicken or ordering Nando's or yeah, you yeah. know something like that. So yeah, it's been good. The lives are completely contrast. Very different. You know, right? London and uh, India. But any any memories of the central side, like we're at Science Circle right now. Uh, only the cinema actually. Yeah, which one? Yeah, the PVR at Science. Uh huh. Yeah, I used to go there. 
as I like I I love watching movies actually. So even when I come to Bombay, even if I land at like nine, I push it sometimes. I'm like guys, you want to go for a eleven thirty show? <laughs> uh, so you're, like, you're a Bollywood buff. Yeah, just Bollywood or uh, cinema. I like the. I like going to the cinema, watching a movie, eating you know popcorn and yeah, the best stuff. Man. So yeah, I love I love going for movies. Like I could even do like four movies in four nights. Oh, super related. Yeah, I'm I'm that guy. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So you've you've had uh, Mumbai barish experiences. Yeah, yesterday also I went to play <laughs> uh, cricket on AstroTurf. Oh yeah. And uh, it was boring. Like we were we were we were wet through. There was no spin because the ball was hitting the ground and just yeah, and skidding yeah, yeah. onto the bat. So, yeah, have you had any run-ins in the international cricket team and etc.? Yeah, actually, quite a few what because I played uh, the celebrity classico uh, oh, yeah? a few years ago. So I was sharing a dressing room with all the cricket legends. So oh, super! Virat Kohli, MS Dhoni, Yuvraj Singh, Zaheer Khan, really? Shikhar Dhawan. You can How's name that it. Like? Yeah. It was amazing. Like, Are really? they envious of you because you're driving like super fast cars, etc.? No, but uh, you know, actually, Dhoni loves cars yeah. and bikes, so yeah. he was very interested. I was like almost starstruck that he was talking to me about <laughs> cars and and bikes and all. But uh, yeah, that was. Uh, amazing experience. So uh, we're back in Five Gardens. Do you want to get, grab something? Yeah, actually, uh, there's a local cafe that I go to quite a lot when I'm here. It's actually owned by my mom's friend. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's called Cafe Seven Ninety Two. It's it's actually like uh, me and my friends sometimes go just hang out there in the afternoon, have tea, have snacks, and all. Do you want to go? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, dude, let's do that. I mean, that will be fun. So, have you? Uh, have you? <laughs> Wondered how people drive. Like you know, generally my producer was telling me this that they said that once you've driven in Mumbai or in India, in many of our cities, then you can drive anywhere. I think it is true. Okay. The Indian uh, drivers on the road are, are genuinely quite good. I think because they have good spatial awareness of <laughs> where they are going, everything. But when you have, to, when I go back to UK, I have to like switch mindsets and switch zones. You know, I can't cross a lane yeah, uh, without indicating, and you know, correct. You have to just be uh, more yeah, careful. So I love, uh, but I love driving in Bombay. Not in peak traffic hours, yeah. but otherwise I, yeah, like on in the night or something. Uh, I like driving. Not fast, but I just like you know. It's quite relaxing to just go out and, That's true. and take a drive. How how often would you be tripping on cars as a child that you went into F1 or just Formula One race, Formula racing? Actually. Even when I was younger, even when my dad used to drive on the road, I used to say, "Go fast, go fast, go yeah. fast." I used to love, I used to like speed, uh, you know, a lot. Uh, I used to watch Formula One on TV. We used to like my family, so we, all of us, my sister, my mom, me, we used to all watch Formula One. Really? And uh, I used to love Alonso at that time. 2005, yeah. 2006 is when I started watching, and he was fighting Correct. with Schumacher for the world championship. Yes, so, yes, yeah. of course. Till he retired for the first time in 2018, he was my my favorite in. in in F1 and uh, yeah do you know the road to the cafe from here yeah, i think left left yeah yeah left left and then again left so then you know your roads in mumbai <laughs> yeah hopefully this is 2 minutes from my house so yeah, I should, you should if know. i don't know this then i'm You're not doing something right yeah Cool. Let's let like, we we'll talk about the rains and uh, how hard is it to drive around in the rains yeah. because we're driving around in the rains in Mumbai. Uh, but let's go get, grab some Perfect. thing first. Yeah. Cool. So this is the cafe where I come to relax. It's so nice. Very small but uh, amazing food. You also live in a vintage, almost like historic kind of building as well, right? Yeah, it's a very uh, the building is old, but the colony is also old. You know, the Parsi colonies are very Correct. in general old, and they don't get too modern. Yeah, dude. I mean, no. uh, there is. I think the lift is quite fairly new in your building as yeah, well. Yeah, just about. Come, you wanna come. Sure. I wonder, I have never come to this place, man. This is one of those like yeah, really, like in, yeah, dude. But once you once you know about it, it's it's nice. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, so because it's raining right now, they don't, but they have more chairs and stuff around the back. Oh, oh, so yeah, of course. Yeah. That's the thing about Mumbai; they really kind of adapt and move on to rains. Yeah, shit moves fast, and then and actually, from my house, you can even walk here. Correct, it's five minutes. 
five minutes of walking. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing like fresh Buna Ghosh, man. Thank you. Go for it. Dig in. Let's go. And this is on you? On your tab, you said? <laughs> on my tab. <laughs> That's the best thing about cafes next to your home, right? Let me like. Thank you. Thank you. So you were saying, uh, best part about cafes next to home? Yeah, yeah right. I can put it on mom's tab. <laughs> Basically, this is why I said like my uh, the colony starts. This is the putla. This oh yeah, the putla this circle. Ha. Ah. And then I, my friend used to stay here. Who owns the cafe now. She's moved down there. But uh, then this is another friend. Basically, it's just dying. And we are all the way at the end. Correct. Of that on second lane. Yeah. Oh yeah, on that side. That so there's one. What we call the charo stuff. Ha, ha, ha. Is where we it's like the middle ground. So we Correct. tell let's meet the charo stuff. So that's, <laughs> that's meeting the, ground. the meeting ground. And then we all do. These places also, the new constructions also they seem like they're doing the same kind of design to keep the Yeah, they're like old only kind of. Correct. It's more paint jobs that they're doing here. Yeah. They because all of this is in the monsoon it becomes like fully green and mossy and all that. <laughs> Does it happen to you because you're a you're also a race car driver? So when you are on <clears throat> when you're not on the steering wheel, there is a inherent need to kind of guide the person now to drive or. Tell oh what to do. no, not no? at all. But I I don't feel comfortable with anyone driving fast. Yeah. When I'm not in control. Yeah. Oh wow. So yeah, I think that is more of a race car mm. kind of. You know, if someone is driving fast, I will be like. Relax. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not comfortable. But any other area that you relate to apart from this one? A lot of close friends in Kushuba. Uh huh. Where town, is this? In oh. town. It's near Regal. Cinema. Oh yes, I know. Kushuba. Like, Kushuba. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of close friends Oops. are from there, and my girlfriend lives just near. Oh here. yeah. So that road I can do blindly. Because ah. I'm the designated driver. And, oh yeah. You know, and I'm in is, is that a thing in your group also? Like you're when you're around, then you're driving. Nobody else is. Oh uh, yeah, I always take my my car. Like ah. even when we are going to Lonavala on the weekend, I'll take my car. People are, do you have place in your car? I said yes. The next person asked, I said yes. One more person asked, cars. That's four. it. Yeah. <laughs> more than four is a is a crowd. Yeah, especially for my car, which is low, hmm. it's very difficult to take more. That's true. Dude. People have to get out on the washi toll then for the speed breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Those are insights only you will know if you go from Mumbai to Lonavala very often, or just Navi Mumbai also. Yeah. Good stuff, man, Jayan. Thank, thank you so you. much for being on the Bombay journey. Cheers, this is you. me, Sid, signing off. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.